you or welcome back to Hello Nigeria. We're joined by our third woman crush for this Wednesday. She is a banker and an MC extraordinaire. She goes with a brand name, The Lady MC. How she juggles both, we are about to find out. She's also the 2018 brand ambassador for Access Bank. She's done a lot of amazing work, and today we're about to find out all that and more. I'm joined by Mojibade Show Sonia, aka Mojibade Show, <laughs> aka The Lady MC. Okay. And I don't know why you Thank are looking you. like me. Why are you wearing mustard? So they say Why are you that... wearing hoops? Why are you wearing a ponytail? Oh, wow, actually. <laughs> so they say that great minds think alike. So maybe, you know, great minds thinking alike. <laughs> well, you have a point there. But it's good to have you. Thank you so much, Ellie. Thank the you. The Lady MC, that's a very catchy name, a catchy brand name. How did you come about the name? Good question. So when I started hosting events, I think I was just using Mojibari Show. So my surname is Show Sonia. And then my siblings, to be clear, everybody goes with the name Show. Show you shorten your surname to Show. And then I thought, okay, Mujibade show. And then I turned the O to O W. And then I went somewhere one day and I heard there's a lady carpenter, there's a lady um, mechanic. And I'm like, okay, maybe the lady MC won't be bad. And that's how the name came. And I really loved it. And you stole, like, I, I, so <laughs> someone, I spoke with someone that said, oh, all of you MC events, you know, so you could be the lady MC. I'm like, nope. That name's already taken. Take it. There's already a lady I'm MC. Sorry. I'm sorry, sorry, <laughs> Olive. But well done. Thank you. But you know, before we come into your MC in life, you're also um, and you're a brand uh, brand ambassador for Access Bank. You're also um, uh, the what was it? You were brand ambassador 2018. 2018. And you're also a banker. Banker. How are you able to do this? Being all of this and still going to host your events and still look like a baby girl. <laughs> okay. So first. Um, I always wanted to be a public speaker growing up. I told my mom I wanted to be a newscaster. She wasn't quite sure. She used to say, you talk a lot. You're always talking. What? In that always talking moment, I knew what I wanted to be. And then thankful for my organization. Like, so thankful. They allow you. One of our core values is um, empowered employees. And they always live to that. So they empower their employees to be the best they can be. And so from hosting, when I first got into my job, I used to be so nervous. I'd be like, ah. I mean, I, I always wanted to be quiet and relaxed and just laid back. But... You know when you have something in you and, you know, it just keeps burning and people started noticing that, oh, she likes to talk, she talks, I mean, she, from hosting maybe departmental um, gatherings and then to hosting bank-wide events. And then so I just became that person who they would go to, oh, we have an event, come and host. And I never said no. No matter how, you know, tired I am, no matter how, maybe sometimes inconvenient, I mean, I have to, you know, put in extra time at work just so that I can make up for time loss when I'm hosting an event. I always do it. And my organization supports that. 100%. I'm oh, so thankful. You're lucky and Thank blessed you. to have such a, a wonderful you. organization to work with. Now, Thank let's you. talk about the first. Can you remember the very first event that you emceed or the way oh, you got wow. into this emceeing path? Beyond knowing you, you liked to talk growing up. There's some people that know they like to talk and end up you know, becoming broadcasters and some of them end up becoming actors. But you have forged a career in emceeing. How did you start? Can you remember your first event? Mm, my very first event, I honestly can't remember, but I know that, I can't remember, it must have been an, um, an Access Bank event that I hosted, and I put it up on social media. It was, oh, I remember, we were running a promo, and I, they used to call me to come and, so we, we used to have um, random selections. I used, to, I used to host it and then talk a lot, talk about the brand. I was so passionate about it, and then I started to feel like, well, this is actually good. I mean, and I always wanted to do it, so I think that was the first time I started hosting events for the bank, and then... I put up on social media and then I started getting DMs like, oh, we have an event. Can you come? I'm like, oh, wow. I mean, people are noticing. People are actually watching. And so I started putting up more videos of me and more stories and more pictures of me at different events. And then I get a lot of DMs saying, oh, we, we like what you're doing. Can you come? And I've gotten a lot of events. Would you say that. that social media has massively helped your brand? Absolutely. Like a hundred pieces. 120% absolutely it has it has one job that I, I mean I, I'm doing it 30 in a row this year I got it from social media and it has been like my biggest event Fantastic. absolutely so social media has been so so it's a very positive tool in you know brand management but you do you feel that somehow you are lucky becoming a wedding MC because you seem to MC weddings a lot honestly I think so because <laughs> do you know that this is June this year I already have I mean I've had two weddings back, and then I have about seven requests for already for weddings, and I'm like, okay, maybe the lady wedding MC. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, and weddings are quite stressful, but I love them because it's a, it's a different setting. It's, and you, they, it, you don't see females hosting weddings like that. But I just tell people that I'm not a comedian, I'm a host, I can give you a bit of witty comments, I can, you know, 
engage the audience, give you entertainment, but don't expect me to come and crack jokes. But I love hosting weddings, actually. I, I didn't think I liked them before, but I actually love hosting so weddings. So what what's the procedure for you when you get a client, a couple that wants you to host their wedding? What do you have to do? Okay, so um, sometimes if I get you through the event planner or maybe the couple, actually, I send you an email. I have a Google form. I get all the details because I don't like... What, one thing I don't like to do, right, is to start asking questions on the day I have my event. So I send you a Google form. I have a template. You fill all the details down to the songs you're dancing into. I don't want to ask you anything that day. I want to know the DJ's name, your parents' name and title, the chairman's, you know, his role. He's a, and people like to be hyped. So you have to hype them. You need to prepare. You need to... It's not on that day. And then I start rushing to say, oh, what's his name? What, is it? what does he do? I want to know everything before. I mean, I want to just be spilling it out like, oh, yeah, I, I was born with him, that kind of thing. <laughs> I want to know the couples, his nickname, the groom's nickname, the, the bride's name, just things that you you know, excite people and then get them thinking, oh my God, she's really on top of her game. So you have to be on top of that game because you don't want to be running around saying, what's his name? What's, what's he going to do? Who's coming up next? You have, in fact, sometimes I even draft programs for my couples. So I give them a draft and then if they want to tweak it, they tweak it and they work with have it. Have you ever found yourself in a situation where you've gotten all this information, you've done all your back end work and on the day of the event is absolute chaos? Yes, I have. <laughs> <laughs> I have a couple of times, but you know, you have to be able to manage it and not look like you're flustered because you don't want to look like you're weak to your clients and to people who are watching because people are always watching. So you have to, you know, stay professional and just know what you're doing. Okay. Now let's talk about, you know, how you're able to... Let's talk about finances. How profitable really is being an MC? And do you think that there's market for more people to join? Absolutely. There are events every day in Lagos in Nigeria. So... Um, when I first started, to be honest, I was like, how do I call my price? How do I tell people I'm charging this? Because I won't lie to you. I've hosted several events free. Like, I mean, in, when you're starting out, you just, you're doing it for the exposure. And then after a while, you know, you start to charge because you're, you're, you're adding value. And, and you because know exposure that cannot pay the bills. It can't. It definitely <laughs> cannot. <laughs> so, you, you know, you also know that you're, you're getting more exposure. And that with that, it comes with value add. And then you... You're, you're selling something, so it's, it can be free. So, and because you're also training yourself, you do research online. You, I mean, your data, you have to buy data to do those research online. And then watch people do there, people that have gone ahead of you, people like you. Oh, you're so <laughs> Because sweet. I actually like how, I mean, you're, you're amazing. You're one of oh, my mentors. Oh, thank you. You're so kind. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about <laughs> the days where, because we talk about the good days, but I'm very particular about highlighting the bad days. And that's one thing that anyone who's close to me knows about. Like, I don't, let's talk about the bad days so people can know that you don't have it all figured out. The bad days where maybe you had to host an event or you had to do a job. Have there been times where you felt, nah, my body, you're not cut out for this, or you questioned your worth? Ah, questioning my worth, yes, it's happened before. And it was a red carpet event I hosted, right? So I got there feeling all fly. I was wearing a very nice dress, nice makeup. <laughs> I just, I was strutting in. And then, so you know how um, events are, it's not only one red carpet um, host, there are different um, house, TV houses that are there. And then I got there. And then there's this name I'd been hearing, but I'd never met her. So she was next to me on the carpet. And I'm like, whoa, Mojibadi, what, what would you be saying? <laughs> so I started to feel a bit intimidated. As in, I, she, she wasn't even, she was doing her own thing. And I was there thinking, but she's going to hear me. Let me reduce my voice. Let me not, she'll be judging me. She'll say, what's this one saying? At some point, I'm like, it was affecting my output. And I'm like, no way. I mean, you have to, what does she actually like? What does she's admiring you? I mean, just do your thing. People are watching. You can't because of someone who is doing her own thing in her own lane, now start to downplay your own self because you feel like you're not good enough. But I mean, that day I felt a bit Aww. not good enough. But I let her up. I mean, we're not friends, funny enough. I'm, I'm friends with her now. And then I told her how I felt. Like she was laughing at me. And, you know, but, but it made me feel... Like, you know, just always bring your A-game, regardless of who's watching. You never even know who's looking up to you. People that you feel have it all figured out don't always have it all figured out. So just bring your A-game always and be on point. But Jivadi, I'm very particular about this, this next question I'm about to ask okay. you. Okay, I'm nervous. <laughs> <laughs> the guest we, we had earlier, I, I interviewed Chisel Mwopoda, and we talked about confronting gender stereotypes okay. facing women in Nigeria. And I want us to look at some of the gender stereotypes that you may have experienced personally, most especially with regards to your career path. Now, you mentioned that when you were younger, people say, ah, she talks a lot. You know, and I understand that because they, that was said to me as well. So it's like, oh, you don't you know you're a girl? You talk too much. Girls should not talk a lot. Girls should not be expressive. What would you say are some of the gender stereotypes that you think that we should, you've experienced directly or indirectly, and you think we need to let go of? So, um, for, as a host, first of all, um, I know that there was a time someone had called me for a job, and I, I mean, I was already, we're already kind of sealing it, and then he then calls to say, oh, sorry that, 
them they don't want me anymore because they wanted a guy because the brand is more relatable with guys and i'm like what does that mean like I, i'm not too sure if that really makes any sense but i mean i let it go i didn't even argue and then um on the other side people just think that if you're doing too much so people sometimes tell you to come down you're always doing too many things like you won't find a husband you won't people think that you're out there i mean i've had people tell me that um you're, you're too out there i'm not sure i can you know really date you and i'm like what does that mean what does it mean what does it mean so i'm living my life i'm living my dreams i want to be a host i'm a banker I'm, i mean i'm trying to you know just work hard right and you're telling me i'm too out there do you say that to a guy who has um, um, is a, a nine to five and is also doing like side hustles. Like I don't know if that I, I'm not sure they do that. So why why does it have to be the females who have to downplay themselves because you know you don't want to be too out there? I'm not sure that makes any sense. So. Wow, that's that's really I'm very. Sure. Important. I mean, I've had people say to me like, "Oh, you got a car? Would you have somebody toast you?" I'm like, "I'm sorry, what does that mean?" I I, I can <laughs> totally relate to some of the things you said. I mean, I back in the day, I thank God that I, I'm glad that we are rewriting the narrative or rewriting really the story because there was a time when they would never let a female MC an event alone. But now I've done several events as well alone by myself. And you have done several events. I, I know that when I first started hosting weddings, I would have a male comedian who would just um, interject and give the jokes. But I had someone tell, tell me one time that I wanted just a female MC. And I'm like, I was really impressed. I mean, a very educated couple, they were like, they don't, even the parents, they were like, oh no, they don't want um, a male, they want it. I'm like, okay, all right, we're getting better. People are coming to, you know, realize the fact that we can do the same things. I mean, it's about your skill, your passion, and your talent. What would you say have been some of the lessons that you've learned from either of your career paths that have affected the other? So what would you say that some of your banking, your banking experience, how would you say it has affected your being an MC? And what would you say are some of the lessons or some of the tips that your MC in experience has affected you as a banker? Okay, so both, right? So in, in, in banking, I've been in four different departments. I started out in credit risk management, I've done products, I've done digital banking, I've done private banking. So meeting people and talking to people helps you, you know, so when I'm hosting, right, I have knowledge of different things. So if sometimes I go to host, host an event that has to do with finance, I'm on top of my game. I know, I mean, a bit of the finance sector. I'm not a, I'm not, I didn't study finance, but I know a bit about banking. So it helps me to talk like, yes, I mean, I was born with this finance thing. And same for banking. So if I have a presentation at work, I'm like, they call, would you rather do it? She's an MC. Like, you already know that <laughs> I can face the crowd without being, you know, being shy or being, I'm mean, having stage fright. So, I mean, it both kind of help me to. All right. What would you say to, uh, you know, someone who wants, who probably has this dream? So there are people who are, I know someone who quit the work, he, he had a nine to five in the bank and he quit it to pursue his career in the entertainment industry. But you are living both your dreams. It's not the reality of everybody. I know. But what would you say to someone who's probably a banker like you, but wants to live this life that you're living? So first, be sure that your organization supports what you're doing. Don't, um... Make sure you're not of, of, offending anybody because if you, I mean, my organization is okay with me hosting, right? So I, I'm able to do it. If you're not, just play it safe. You can talk to your HR department, find out what the rules and policies are. For me, I'm able to do both because I host for my um, bank and I'm also able to host for other, comp other um, corporates and sometimes weddings. So just live your dreams. Find what makes you happy. Pursue your dreams because in... In, in the end, it's, it's, you have to be fulfilled. Your fulfillment is key. Like, you can have all the money. And it was the worst that can happen. Like, you, you tried and it didn't work out, but you, you go, know that you tried it. it you How know? would you know that? I mean, you would only be able to tell once, once you've tried, right? Exactly. So. But please, you can put plans in place so you can t give yourself a target and say, I'm not the best, you know, I'm not, I'm not the one that should be advising you, but from the experience I've got, <laughs> it have you know the people who had to give advice of, to those who had 95s and wanted to pursue their dreams, they would say, work for a while, give yourself a deadline, save up, so that when you leave, you can have something to fall back on in case things don't quite work out. But right. I'm but honestly really thankful to my organization and a couple of people who, you know, keep pushing you to do better. I mean, I mean Sheyu Kumapai is an amazing person. I met you, Kobe. Absolutely amazing. It's so sad. Like, they're always <laughs> cheering you on. It's so sad. A couple of people who just know that you can do this, and they're always, always rooting for you. Thank you so much. And, you know, without you guys, I mean, I probably won't be here, but you guys are being amazing. So that is the moral of the story. Surround yourself with people that will push you to where you want to go. Thank you so much, Mojibadi, for joining you. us. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. In 10 seconds, what is the dream? Where do you see Mojibadi show in, in the nearest future? Mm. So my vision generally is to, you know, live a life of impact and... A positive, a positive in fact, impact worthy of emulation. And I always say to people that as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. So 
I intend to keep being me, living my dreams, just allowing other people to see that you can do this thing. Like, it doesn't, don't let your background keep your back on the ground. Hmm. Yay, Shay, Somebody is preaching. <laughs> so, but pretty much just do you, live a life that fulfills you. All right. Thank you very All much. Right. We look forward to seeing you living this amazing life and continually shining your bright light. Totally as, as an aside, are you single? I'm single. So, are you single? I'm single. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody Extremely single. As a single. To enjoy more of these our Ugonge videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.